Good morning and welcome to our ship. Special welcome uh, to those of you present here. It's a great joy to be able to worship together as we seek the Lord's favor upon us this morning. If you are able, please stand. Today the church remembers Alban, first martyr of Britain. Grace and peace be with you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And also with you. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Spirit, come, fill us to overflowing. Spirit, show us your power. Be our teacher, Holy Spirit, lead us into all truth. Come, Spirit, be our healer. Heal us, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, heal us and make us whole. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God of peace, you have, brought, you have taught us that in returning and rest we shall be saved. In quietness and confidence shall be our strength. By the might of your Spirit, lift us, we pray, to your presence, where we may be still and know that you are God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, by whose grace and power your holy martyr Alban triumphed over suffering, and was faithful even to death. Grant us who now remember him in thanksgiving to be so faithful in our witness to you in this world that we may receive with him the crown of life through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of scripture. A reading from the book of Wisdom. But the souls of the righteous are in the hand of God, and no torment will ever touch them. In the eyes of the foolish they seem to have died, and their departure was thought to be a disaster, and they are going from us to be their destruction, but they are at peace. For though in the sight of others they were punished, their hope is full of immortality. Having been dis disciplined a little, they will receive great good because God tested them and found them worthy of himself. Like gold in the furnace he tried them, and like a sacrificial burnt offering he accepted them. In the time of their visitation, they will shine forth and will run like sparks through the stubble. They will govern nations and rule over peoples, and the Lord will reign over them forever. Those who trust in him will understand truth, and the faithful will abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are upon his holy ones and he watches over his elect. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us recite together Psalm 31, verse 1 through 5. 
In you, O Lord, I seek refuge. Do not let me ever be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me. Incline your ear to me. Rescue me speedily. Be a rock of refuge for me, a strong fortress to save me. You are indeed my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that is hidden for me, for you are my refuge. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. A reading from St. John's first letter. Do not be astonished, brothers and sisters, that the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love the brothers and sisters. Whoever does not love abides in death. All who hate a brother or a sister are murderers. And you know that murderers do not have eternal life abiding in them. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for the brothers and sisters. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If you are able, please stand for the reading of the Gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace to but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. As I said at the very beginning today, the church remembers Auburn, first matter of Britain. I don't know whether you know this, but we have a book called, uh, a liturgical book called uh, Holy Women, Holy Men. And the church uh, remembers some people who have been significant, who have been faithful in the past, historically, but also most recently. Uh, you would call them saints. Uh, the, it is that book replaced another one called uh, a book of occasional service. No, hol holy f feasts and fasts. Something like that. Feasts and fasts. Holy feasts and fasts. And so today, this particular date, is uh, we, the church remembers St. Alban, uh, first martyr of Britain, uh, who was uh, uh, killed. It's, uh, the, the, the death is contested around 304 A.D. So very early uh, in the history of the church. So I want to read through this, his story and uh, maybe draw some uh, lessons 
from him for our time. Alban is the earliest Christian in Britain who is known by name and, according to tradition, the first British martyr. Alban was a young pagan soldier in the Roman army stationed at Ver Verulamium, a city about 20 miles northeast of London, now called St. Albans. During the persecution of Diocletian, some historians think Decius, Alban sheltered a Christian priest in his home. The priest converted and baptized him. Later, when Roman soldiers came to search the house, Alban hid the priest and distinguished himself in the priest's disguise, sorry, disguised himself in the priest's cloak. He was dragged off to court. Alban was tortured and martyred in place of the priest on the hilltop where the cathedral of St. Albans now stands. The traditional date of his martyrdom is 303 or 304, but recent studies suggest that the year was actually 209, <laughs> so they are off about 100 years, during the persecution under the emperor Septimius Severus. When it was discovered who he was and what he had done, he was accused of harboring a rebellious and sacrilegious person, meaning the priest, <laughs> uh, because the, the powers then were pagans. Uh, Oban then publicly confessed his faith in, Je in Jesus Christ, was scourged and still persisting in his confession was sentenced to death. The executioner refused to do his duty and he and the priest whose names we do not know soon became the second and third British martyrs. The Venerable Bede gives this account of Auburn's trial. When Auburn was brought in the judge happened to be standing before an altar offering sacrifice to devils. What is your family and race? demanded the judge. How does my family concern you? replied Oban. If you wish to know the truth about my religion, know that I am a Christian and I am ready to do a Christian's duty. I demand to know your name, insisted the judge. Tell me at once. My parents named me Oban, he answered, and I worship and adore the living and true God who created all things. Oban has always been highly honored among British Christians. The site of Oban's martyrdom soon became a shrine. King Ofa of Marcia established a monastery there about the year 793 and in the high middle ages St. Albans ranked as the premier abbey in England. The great Norman Abbey Church began in 1077 now serves as the cathedral of the Diocese of St. Albans established in 1877. It is the second longest church in England. Winchester Cathedral is the longest by six feet and it is built on higher ground than any other English cathedral. In a chapel east of the choir and high altar there are remains of the 14th century marble shrine of St. Alban. Almighty God, by whose grace and power your holy martyr Alban triumphed over suffering and despised death grant who beseech you that enduring hardness and waxing valiant in fight we may with no with the noble army of martyrs receive the crown of everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 
an interesting story so I think this speaks a little bit to the struggles or even of our time power is a very interesting thing <laughs> and so and we know that Christians when the Roman Empire became Christian Christians persecuted other people <laughs> uh, but now in this time period the pagans were in power and uh, they saw Christians as rebellious and sacrilegious people <laughs> and they persecuted them but I think the most important thing the lesson here is to know who you are and where you're going and uh, basically your identity and your destiny and this is perhaps the most important thing for us regardless of the uh, of the theological grounds or political grounds but to know who you are and whose you are and to guard your heart Oban was willing to die for his faith but he died with dignity in the sense that he was not the aggressor last Sunday you if you are uh, at church or you are able to watch the video I talked about doing the right thing not uh, preventing you from suffering if anything you could suffer for doing the right thing the challenge is always to know whether you are doing the right thing or not <laughs> because you could be on the wrong side and really that's where for me I always leave things to God I say God if I, I hope I'm right and I am going to be faithful to what I believe to be right but if I'm long, uh, wrong then I rely on your mercy because God is a is a merciful God, but also that uh, that really, uh, I think uh, the example of of Auburn uh, brings us back to the important things. He saved this priest, even though he was a pagan himself. And I think this is really uh, perhaps the most important lesson of this story. He was a pagan himself, but he was not willing to go with the crowds, with the spirit of the age, where the persecution was towards the Christians. Oban hid. It's powerful. He was not even a Christian when he did, the, when he brought in the priest to serve him. You know, love and charity. You don't need to learn it from a book, <laughs> even the Bible. It is inherent. It's what we call natural revelation. In, 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 we talk about how God has revealed himself to us. And first is there is natural revelation. Then there is special revelation. But natural revelation is that thing we have in our, in our heart the conscious and even though Auburn was a pagan soldier he knew that it was not right to kill these people called Christians perhaps he had observed them and he had seen that they had done nothing wrong other than sharing their story so I think then of course the, after he got to know the priest he found his story very compelling and said yes to Jesus and he was willing to die for that but I say even if you don't understand the theology at least you can understand kindness and be willing to suffer for kindness and as I said last week 
if you suffer for good, for doing good, for being kind, let it be. And God will rescue those who suffer for good. And the, 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 the reading we read in Wisdom, Wisdom, by the way, is uh, not a, a, a canonical book. It's part of the Apocrypha, those books that were not agreed upon. Talk about disagreement again. When they were selecting the books they thought were truly inspired by God, there are some books that they all, the whole council, uh, disagreed, agreed on that said, these don't belong. Then there are those they said, these do belong. These truly are inspired by God. They meet the criteria. Then there are those that they looked at and said, and, mm, some people said, I think these belong. And other people said, no, these can't belong. So what did they agree to do? They said, those of you who think they belong, that they contain the word of God, that they are inspired by God, you use them. It's okay. Those who don't think they, they are inspired, we will not use them. And so uh, the, this book, for example, the Book of Wisdom, is not used by all Christians. But they came to that agreement. And I wish that on all issues of disagreement, people could say, if you think this is of God, go ahead. If you don't think it is of God, go ahead. And then let us join together on the things we believe they are of God and work together on those. Those where we disagree, we, 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 we act separately. This is a perfect example. And when I look at it, I say, wow, for me, I think it is of God. Listen to what it says. But the souls of the righteous are in the hand of God. And no torment will ever touch them. In the eyes of the foolish they seem to have died and their departure was thought to be a disaster and they are going from us to be their destruction but they are at peace. I see it consistent with all the other books of the Bible we read. So I would be on the side of those who, <laughs> who say let's use it. And there are people, probably even my friends, who would say, no, it's not one of the 66. But, so anyway, our prayer is that when we, my prayer is that when we can't understand everything, because the world is full of so much confusion, at least let's come down to love. And ask the question, what does love look like? in this particular situation. And if we win on love, then we are good. Because love, the Bible tells us, covers all sin. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the example of St. Alban, for his willingness to bring in the persecuted, even to the extent of dying in his on his behalf, in his behalf. How we pray that you give us such love that we may be willing to suffer for the sake of those who are persecuted. And how we pray that you open our eyes, Lord, and give us the courage not to go with the crowds, but to seek your face, to seek your guidance in all matters. We thank you. We bless you. We honor you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. At this point, I invite you to join with me as we name before God those for whom we offer our prayers. Gracious God, we come before you this morning and lift up to you those who have asked for our prayers, remembering especially those who lost loved ones recently. 
Shelly, Julia, Dev, and bring before you those who are not well, who are sick, Jacob, Bud, Charles, Wayne. Thank you, Lord, that his surgery went well yesterday. Scott, Janet, Robert, Burns, Leo, Miriama, Charlotte, Frankie, Deborah, Liz, Montana, all those who are bereaved, all those with COVID-19. Several of our members have called to say they have been exposed. The staff and children at our school as they um, enjoy this summer vacation and the children at the Sao Paulo Mass Ministries. We also give you thanks for those who are feeling better but not out of the woods yet. Remembering especially Sharon, Barbara, Jean, Janet, Carol, Ron, Terry, Janet, Terry, Jen, Ray, Bill, Doug, Red, Daniela, Jeffrey, Donna, Ken and Brandy, Jenny, Judy, Barbara, Gail, Cesar, Michael, Robert, Kathy, Ruth, Mike, Amos, Emmanuel, Yael, Elena, and all others, Lord, on our prayer list, Abel, thank you, Lord, Asteri, thank you. God the Father, your will for all people is health and salvation. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. God the Son, you came that we might have life and might have it more abundantly. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. God the Holy Spirit, you make our bodies the temple of your presence. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. Holy Trinity, one God in you, we live and move and have our being. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. Lord, grant your healing grace to all who are sick, injured, or disabled, that they may be made whole. Hear us, O Lord of life. Grant to all who seek your guidance and to all who are lonely, anxious, or despondent knowledge of your will and an awareness of your presence. Hear us, O Lord of life. Mend broken relationships and restore those in, in emotional distress to soundness of mind and serenity of spirit. Hear us, O Lord of life. Bless physicians, nurses, and all others who minister to suffering, granting them wisdom and skill, sympathy and patience. Hear us, O Lord of life. Grant to the dying peace and a holy death, and uphold by the grace and consolation of your Holy Spirit those who are bereaved. Hear us, O Lord of life. Restore to wholeness whatever is broken by human sin, in our lives, in our parish, in our community, in our nation, and in the world. Hear us, O Lord of life. You are the Lord who does wonders. You have declared your power among the peoples. With you, O Lord, is the well of life, and in your light we see light. Hear us, O Lord of life. Heal us and make us whole. Almighty God, giver of life and health, Send your blessing on all who are sick and upon those who minister to them, that all weakness may be vanquished by the triumph of the risen Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. This time I invite you to take some time of silence and speak to the Lord about the concerns you bring this morning.
give you glory, I give you all, I give you praise. I bless your holy name. Thank you, Lord. And if you wish to be anointed, I invite you to stand. I come around with oil. And I lay my hands upon you and anoint you with holy oil in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Seeching our Lord Jesus Christ sustain you with his presence. To grant you the inward anointing of the Holy Spirit. To drive away all sickness of body and spirit. To renew your strength. And to grant you victory. Which will enable you to continue loving and serving him. All the days of your life. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Bless you. Ray, I lay my hands upon you and anoint you with the Holy Oil in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Beseeching our Lord Jesus Christ, sustain you with his presence to grant you the inward anointing of the Holy Spirit, to drive away all sickness of body and spirit, to renew your strength and to grant you victory which will enable you to continue loving and serving him all the days of your life. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Gary, I lay my hands upon you and anoint you with holy oil in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Beseeching our Lord Jesus Christ, sustain you with his presence to grant you the inward anointing of the Holy Spirit to drive away all sickness of body and spirit, to renew your strength, and to grant you victory, which enable you to continue loving and serving him all the days of your life. In Jesus' name, amen. Bless you. And now may the Almighty Lord, who is a strong tower to all who put their trust in him, to whom all things in heaven and on earth and under the earth bow and obey, be now and evermore your defense, and make you know that the only name under heaven given for health and salvation is the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Thank you. Thank you. Peace. Peace. You may be seated. Walk in love as Christ loved us and offered himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. Blessed are you, Lord God, King of the universe. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer that may become our spiritual food. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God, King of the universe. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands that may become our spiritual f f drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, wash away my sins and cleanse me from my iniquity.
we celebrate this Eucharist in thanksgiving to God for all the blessings of our lives for his promise of his strength and courage and grace to carry us through the challenges of our lives but more so intercession on our own behalf and behalf of many that we will learn to love sacrificially and to be willing to suffer on behalf of the persecuted. The Lord be with you. If you are able, please turn. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and call us new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, O God, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 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 
Hallelujah. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. And now the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve your body and soul to eternal life. Read the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve your body and soul to eternal life. Sit the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve your body and soul to eternal life. Gary, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve your body and soul to eternal life. Let us pray together. Gracious Father, we give you praise and thanks for this holy communion of the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, the pledge of our redemption. And we pray that it may bring us forgiveness of our sin, strength in our weakness, and everlasting salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now may God the Father bless you, God the Son heal you, God the Holy Spirit give you strength. May God the Holy and Undivided Trinity guard your body, save your soul, and bring you safely to his heavenly country where he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thank you again for coming. Have a blessed rest of the week.